taking time out to uh, join through webinar. Um, and this is uh, my topic tonight, the human factors, one that has been, uh, we've discussed at length for many years uh, in our education department. And um, it's one that, <clears throat> that uh, as, as we uh, go through the slides tonight, I definitely would like some, uh, you know, feedback and some interaction with you folks uh, towards the end at the question and answer session. If um, there's something that maybe sparks something in you that uh, we'd like to add to, or uh, even if you don't have a question, uh, if it's just something that an experience that you had, I'd, I'd love to love to hear from you. So, uh, Oh, there we go. Okay, so course objectives. Um, <clears throat> correctly identify the human factor as presented in the lecture. So I'm going uh, to elaborate more on what that is. And um, and I'm sure some of you are probably pretty interested to, to uh, see what I have to say on that. So uh, recall the affective domain as presented in the lecture. We're going to talk a little bit about the affective domain as a an instructor here in the state of Michigan, uh, teaching all levels from MFR to paramedic. Um, the affective domain is one that has been particularly interesting to me. And as pre-hospital practitioners, uh, the affective domain is the one that I think is that we have, um, you know, there's not necessarily a textbook on the affective domain. There is some elements that are discussed throughout all the textbooks, but uh, it's one that hopefully somebody comes into the program uh, having some elements in the affective domain and, and we'll talk about how to um, how to impact that uh, in the providers uh, maybe in your program or in your organization so we also want to i'm going to describe ways to communicate effectively while caring for patients so it's one of the things that um, and just in that uh, in that objective itself uh, you know effective communication uh, while caring, and uh, you know, I've had lots of students ask me, "Well, how, how, wh what do you mean by caring for the patients?" And we're going to talk about that. Um, so, <clears throat> the human factor here, you'll see a picture of uh, one of my past paramedic students with uh, one of our, actually, one of our past patients who, uh, and obviously, it's a stage photo, so you can you can kind of see the the caring. But if you knew Sam there in the picture and the and the um, lady there, you would, you'd know that that was the same interaction that I've seen several times when uh, he interacted with her, even outside of the photo here for us. So uh, there's a <clears throat> the quote here from Leo Biscalia, uh, too often we underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring all of which have the potential to turn a life around. And that's really what <clears throat> my basis of this um, presentation is here. Uh, we, um, as I got into EMS uh, from a retail sales background, uh, I quickly learned that uh, we, we don't live in a perfect world and none of us, none of us are perfect. Um, and, <clears throat> As we interact with other folks, uh, whether it's in EMS or just our general daily lives, uh, we sometimes forego and forget the power of touch, a smile, a kind word, and um, a listening ear, just the smallest act, of, smallest act of kindness that we can give. And I, really, I, we all got into EMS uh, or I would hope that most of us got into EMS because we really wanted to care for patients. We really wanted to help people. Uh, and it's, it's that constant reminder, that daily reminder, um, maybe if, if it's with your partners, if it's with whoever uh, you interact with, somebody maybe at the hospital, uh, first responders on scene, that how we're, how we're viewed as EMS professionals really rolls around the human factor. And, and I've dug through countless numbers of textbooks and it talks about professionalism, it talks about ethics and integrity and honesty. Uh, and you would hope that people that would get into this profession that wanted to be helpful 
and caring would have some of those attributes coming into this profession. Uh, but I think sometimes I've, I've experienced over time uh, that whether it be just the workload, life in general, um, people tend to get burned out and forget the, the small stuff. The, uh, I had an EMT that worked with me one time that we would do, um, you know, inner facility nursing home, hospital nursing home transfers. And uh, this, pa you know, patients who had been in front of doctors and nurses and maybe a previous crew and we show up and their glasses are smudged and they're dirty and they can't see barely see out of them and he would take time to clean their glasses um, to make sure that that their feet were tucked in on the on the stretcher just the smallest things making the biggest impact um, and that's really what the human factor is all about is the small stuff it's the um, pay attention to the little details and you, and you can just simply smile at somebody making sure that they're comfortable uh, going out of your way uh, to share with them uh, the, some small acts of kindness. Um, <clears throat> recently, um, I've had the unexpected privilege, I guess, of uh, actually being one that uh, had to be cared for by some of my own um, colleagues or um, students. And I got a nice little transport over to a local hospital here in Midland and uh, was taken very good care of. But uh, one of the things we do really well, I think all of us do a great job of taking care of strangers, but often are very poor at taking care of each other. Uh, and what I mean by that is that we don't necessarily mistreat each other, but when that instance occurs that your coworker's sick or um, somebody very close to you um, has a medical emergency while in the midst of being out, being at the station or being on a call, um, it sometimes is very uh, distracts us from the overall job of taking care of taking care of them because it's it's catches us off guard. Um, you know, we we see them in, often in the light that you know they're not they're not sick, but now they're sick, and we go from being a paramedic and EMTs to being a friend and almost sometimes I think forgetting the things that we do as paramedics and uh, not that they miss anything with me, but it, we had some, several discussions afterwards about uh, we actually debriefed <laughs> after they cared for me and they, they said, you know, it was like I, 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 it was my first day on the job and I've been a paramedic for 20 years and uh, they were just really caught off guard. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> and I, want everybody to kind of reflect a little bit about being being human and, and it's okay to make mistakes um, you know we make we make mistakes as practitioners doctors nurses uh, every one of us we make mistakes and it's it's being there to, to help prop up your coworker um, and really make sure that that you know it, it's not a, a, a negative um, you know they 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 may really feel like it was a negative but it you know take it into into the context and make it an educational opportunity i uh, wanted to share this next slide here um, about the golden rule so you know as, as i said we all got into this because we want to help help each other and we want to and be caring and and help people and I've said this a couple of times in classes where I've said, you know, you follow the golden rule and I've gotten looks from people in the audience that necessarily didn't know what I was, what I was talking, what I was talking about. The golden rules expressed by cultures around the world. You got to, you know, I've, I've had to realize over time that maybe not everybody understands what the golden rule is. And I say the golden rule, I would hope most of the people on this webinar would say, well, yeah, you know, it's, it's do unto others as you do have them do unto you, the law of reciprocity. Um, you know, if you want somebody to, to be nice to you, then be nice to them. And uh, unfortunately, I, I, I don't know as that message gets shared. Um, you know, if we, sh obviously we show up to someone's house to care for them, it's a, the expectation that we're going to, to, to be, caring and thoughtful and kind 
but that isn't always the case. I've spent time as a supervisor, um, both in retail sales and both in EMS, and um, took, I was a customer service manager at J Sporting Goods for quite a few years and moved into EMS, kind of got out, away from uh, retail sales and moved into EMS. And in EMS, I, after becoming a paramedic for a few years, really worked up into a super, supervisor role. And one of the most common complaints, whether it be in EMS or in retail sales, was the person that the maybe the crew or, or the um, employee interacted with didn't necessarily do anything wrong. It was how they held themselves, how they, their body language, they maybe didn't pay attention to them, didn't give them the, the human factor. Um, and that was most often the case, you know, people don't, people don't generally call and have a complaint about care issues because they really don't know what you know, they don't know what you're supposed to do. And I'm going to get to that here in a second. What they, what they get, what they do know is how you should treat them and how you should treat them as if they were your own family. Um, I, I really spent a lot of time in all of my MFR programs, my EMT programs, my paramedic program, and a colleague of my, mine, we, uh, Ken White and I have had lots of discussion about this, about the human factor. And, and um, this really is kind of a, a, a brainstorm between the two of us over the course of the last 10 years is we just have people that miss just absolutely miss that being nice to people um, just be doing on, unto others you do you'd have them do unto you and maybe maybe that I wouldn't necessarily want somebody being nice to me so I don't necessarily think that's how I should treat everybody else and I'm I'm going to reach out to to somebody in the publishing that writes some textbooks to tell them that I would like a chapter on being nice, and you and I I just I really feel that that's something that's missing that that we really need to stress. Um, so I said that um, I get back to this. So one of the things that we often discuss as it relates to the golden rule and having somebody do on to to you as you'd have them do unto you is when we um, when we have new students that get into this profession they are a fresh set of eyes and we share with them that when they come into this they have no no preconceived notions of people they have no preconceived notions of uh, of anything, or really of EMS, uh, unless they've been around it. So if I were to call for an ambulance today at my house, I have some preconceived notions. I have some understanding of how I should be treated. I know medicine, and I know what the person that shows up to care for me or my family is supposed to know. It's much like being... You know, if you were if you were a, a world class chef, you go to a restaurant and you know how a steak is supposed to be cooked. You know how, you know, uh, a salad is a Caesar salad is supposed to be made. Well, in EMS, we know what we know medicine. We know how people are supposed to treat treat us. And um, so, not only do I have some understanding of the medical and you know, you're supposed to do a 12 lead on me. I've got a cardiac history and, you know, you should start an IV and give me medication or give me oxygen and, you know, get a blood pressure. Or you can show up with, with your stretcher and no equipment and ask me if I've got shoes and haphazardly get me to your stretcher and take me out to your ambulance or make me walk to the ambulance. Um, so <clears throat> all of those things would, as we all know, would be unacceptable. And, and the next um, bottom line here says, do the right thing. And, and I highlight, I have that as a thought invoking uh, statement because when everybody, when anybody ever says to me, just do the right thing, don't worry about it. Just do the right thing. You know, I've, I've had, uh, I've had administrators tell me, yeah, you'll figure it out. Just do the right thing. What, what if I don't know what that right thing is? What is the right thing? Now, I can use my experiences previously in, in life where I could ask somebody, hey, can you please explain what the right thing is? Because 
I'm missing it. I'm missing what the, that right thing is. Um, but think about that. Um, you know, as you are working maybe in, out in the field or you're teaching a class and you're telling somebody to just do the right thing, um, what is that right thing? Just think about that. So as, as, I, as I think about that, uh, one of the things that <clears throat> has been very passionate for me over the last 10 years, uh, I've got an opportunity to meet people of all backgrounds, uh, from, from people who are homeless to people who are multimillionaires. And <clears throat> I, uh, I like to have, uh, I have kind of a welcoming speech to every new student body that comes through our classrooms. And everybody is somebody, someone. Um, you know, we, we often go on patients who call us for some of the things that we find are the most trivial, but that's their emergency. Uh, it really is. It's their emergency. And, and this gentleman here in this, in this um, picture is is homeless um, from, he's got a home, but it's not our idea of a home, but it's his home. And you are a guest in his home. The gentleman that's taking care of him here looks like he's taking his blood pressure and gathering the history. And um, <clears throat> but just, rem just remember, you know, it, it, we're going into people's houses that it may not be your house. And you may not think that you know, you'd want to live there, but that's their house. That's their home. And, 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 and be non-judgmental. We tell, you, you, we tell students, I have students ride with me and I tell them, you know, Hey, um, this may not be your ideal of, of perfect living conditions, but it's theirs and they enjoy it. It's what, you know, it's what they have at the time. And, and we have to be respectful. Um, you know, this gentleman here in this picture, who's getting his blood pressure checked, he's somebody's, son he's somebody's brother somebody's father uh, somebody's friend he's somebody's someone and the whole human factor is based on that principle of just being human with one another uh, consistently being honest i have one of the things that i share with my students is to have integrity above reproach and integrity and honesty uh, with your patients, with your partners, uh, with your loved ones, with yourself, um, to be consistently honest and, and have integrity. If you make a mistake, own it. You know, I, I had a conversation this afternoon with one of my paramedic students who is now a paramedic and um, just simply asked some questions. And he, he had integrity. He was like, I made a mistake. And, um, but he, and he was, you know, he, he was like, I'm, I'll not, I won't let it happen again. I'll work really hard to make sure it doesn't happen. And um, just a really, really good guy. Um, and, he, and he follows those core principles. So being compassionate. And this is another, um, another term that I think we see a lot in, in our textbooks. You hear it um, at lots of seminars. Um, being compassionate and sharing compassion with somebody, you know, um, it's those kind words. It's that doing the small things, giving somebody, you know, you know, this gentleman here may need an, a coat. He doesn't look like he has a really warm coat and going and actually um, maybe to a, to a uh, Salvation Army or something along that lines to, to maybe show back up with a coat to, to get him through or a new pair of shoes or, or something. It's those little things. I've shared lots of stories with my students about um, patients who didn't have the things that they need in the refrigerator, like milk and bread and, um, and going and getting those for them or stopping and, and um, you know, on a, on a long transfer somewhere and, and they just need a bottle of water or a sandwich or something. Uh, it's that being human with your patients. It's being human with each other. Uh, it seems to have been, seems to be lost somewhere. And I really, that's my passion for sharing this today because I'm going to ask each of each one of you to go out and to help not only be human because um, we're all human, but really share that message of being human with each other and, and 
And again, you could kind of link that back to the, um, you know, do the right thing is it's a really ambiguous, it's a really open-ended term. And what does that really mean? And I think it's like all of us have probably seen or have witnessed somebody doing uh, CPR, doing chest compressions. And, and, I, and I talk about this a lot when, when I'm teaching CPR is, you know, I know what it look, I know what bad CPR looks like. And I can watch CPR on television and I, I go, man, that's really horrible CPR. Um, there, um, but I, I, I know what good CPR looks like when I see it. And, you know, we have, now we have the advent of all of this new technology that gives us feedback and tells us how good our chest compressions are. And that, chest compressions, you know, you get the feedback and tells you your depth and your rate and you're like, yep, that was good CPR. I was watching it and it matched the monitor. It, met our, it matched our feedback. The feedback said, you know, good compressions. Um, or I've seen, I've seen the, the CPR that said, eh, you know, uh, push harder, push faster. You're going too slow. Um, and, you know, you, and you can see it. You can spot it a mile away. You can spot when somebody's not being human a mile away when they just are really missing that that smile that kind word that doing you know paying it forward all those little uh, catchphrases uh, to help really reinforce the fact of of the human factor so again here um, and this this is a, a this picture here has um, a few of our staff with that uh, patient um, previously that we previously talked about and one of my paramedic students standing off back behind her and and they really um, are trying to emulate and share that kind caring um, type of atmosphere and that it's catchy um, and, and the net and the opposite is catchy as well if we're um, you know we're not being human and we're not being nice and caring and kind and we're just the opposite of those things that that can also uh, replicate and you know leach out into our into our organizations into our um, classrooms uh, into the field and the people that we interact with so uh, another another uh, Little quote here from Leo Buscagalia. Uh, the minute we stop learning, we begin death, the process of dying. We learn from each other with every action we perform. We are teaching goodness or evil every time we step out of the house and into the street. And the true that that couldn't be a truer statement is, um, you know, we are we every time we interact with somebody we we are making conscious decisions of either being good or we can make a subconscious decision or conscious of being evil and we see we see that in ems like i said when i made that transition from from uh, working retail at jay sporting goods into ems that transition into ems i would have never thought all of the horrific things that um, that you see, you know, I, my vision was the Johnny, the Johnny and Roy from emergency. That was, that was the era I grew up in. And that's what I thought, boy, this is, you know, really going to have, you're going to have a huge impact, but you don't necessarily all the social issues that we interact, that we deal with and that we have to interact with. And so that some, I think is what maybe gnaws at our, our soul a little bit that distracts us from be just going back to the human factor. Um, so just as, a, just as a reminder, every, every time we step out of the house, we can, we can choose to teach goodness. We can choose evil, um, but we can't stop learning. Um, we gotta, we gotta constantly be striving to learn, um, every, every day, um, all day long. So one of my passions, uh, in, in here in this slide is, is developing our future practitioners. The, the future of EMS, the people that are going to show up to our houses uh, to care for us and our loved ones long after I leave EMS. Uh, and it's got a, a little picture here with, you know, seven, seven or eight ducks and one that's just trying to climb the curb. And all the rest of them are kind of standing in line watching them. And he's 
they're they're trying to work on their technique here i think a little bit and he's he's uh he's really can't get his little wings up there to kind of pull him up so he's relying on his feet and he's but he's got his head up over top of that curve and he's he's almost there and <clears throat> so these these other ducks that are sitting there ducklings that are sitting there watching him are, are really leading by example um so he's he's stepping up there and, and they, they're checking his form out but leading by example that's one of the things that uh, as you're developing uh if you're in the EMS education, uh, but even if you're not, if you're a new, a, even a new EMT or a new paramedic, maybe a supervisory organization, uh, leading by example, and, and you know you hear that term thrown out there again a lot. That oh, lead by example. Okay, well I, I think I got that. Is I'm going to guide some people, and the actions that I perform and the mannerisms that I have are what's going to be replicated. What these folks are going to be watching and um, you'll see I, I have a slide here later with a fishbowl we're all in a fishbowl um, people are always watching you whether it be your partner whether it be your um, your family uh, your patients maybe the nurses and the doctors that you turn patients over to at the hospital they're always looking at you and they're always watching your mannerisms how you how you interact um, how you interact with your patients how you interact with them and um, and I think it's pretty easy sometimes for us to get off track. If we're working on developing our, our future practitioners, um, you know, it's, it's not hard sometimes. We can just get overwhelmed with things to get off track. And it's really um, been kind of my mission to help. And, you know, the people in, in our education department here at MMR, all of our, uh, all of my colleagues, uh, instructor coordinators, uh, one I think is listening tonight, she, she's always, trying to help keep me on the path with just small reminders, little smiles, just really trying to um, keep us all um, to remember that, that, you know, there's, it's tough as it gets sometimes. It's just that you just need that little smile, that little reminder that really might be the piece that gets this little duckling up over the top is if he just has a reminder that he can do it, um, that there, there is, um, you know, there is, something up there. I don't know if it was maybe Brett or mom he's looking for, but something's up there that they're all going after. So, um, so the next, the next portion here is, is, so how do we get, how do we, how do we develop our future practitioners? Uh, and this is a really good question. This is kind of where our portfolio our paramedic portfolio process is headed. So in paramedic education, uh, in, the la in the last couple of years, it's really taken a, a dramatic, um, turn uh, towards the portfolio process from the National Registry. And, and in there, uh, which has been very, you know, it's been something that we've always done, but it hasn't really necessarily always been wrote down. You know, we do scenarios, we'll put twists in there, we'll um, really try to make it as challenging for our, our para paramedics. But now we've got, we've actually got a formalized process that, that this is headed and with the scenarios and the documentation of the scenarios and the, and the scenarios that lots of educators all over the country have helped write and pushed out in all, in all of them, there's, we're measuring now the affective domain. So the affective domain is, is that it's, it's, um, it's a qualitative measurement of how the paramedic and, the, and their EMT partner is, is performing in the scenario in the classroom. And um, so <clears throat> as we're, trying to move to, to, to mold them with the affective domain. Um, and by the way, this was measured by um, Bloom's uh, wrote a paper in, I believe it was 1979, uh, talking about all the different domains of learning, uh, the cognitive, which is the book learning, the psychomotor, which is the, the, the hand stuff that mo most of us as, as paramedics and EMTs and, and first responders are really good at is the, is the hands-on stuff. Um, and I would dare say that many of us come into this profession with a pretty strong affective domain. Um, we just may need some, some tweaking uh, on our affective domain. And so, as you can see here, it's kind of a pyramid of, you know, from receiving phenomenon. Um, and that's the simplest form of the affective domain. You know, for example, listens to others with respect. That's a pretty simple, um, you know, listening, 
um, listening to somebody with respect, giving them eye contact. And this is something that at the very minimum that I ex you know, try to expect out of my, my students, uh, making eye contact. Uh, this starts in day one in class and, and teaching them to, to make that eye contact, make that connection. Um, it's really, really important to make that connection with your patient. And you have to, you have to look them in the eye um, and uh, to be respectful. And, and I, uh, I shouldn't have to say it, but I often do in classes is, you know, remember, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, ask them what they, you know, if, it, if they prefer to be called Richard Smith or Mr. Smith or Rick or Rich, um, you know, take that, take that time to ask that, um, for, to give that respect to your patients. Uh, resp responding is the next one. So this is, uh, participates in class discussions, gives a presentation, uh, maybe questions, new ideals, concepts uh, in order to fully understand them, knows safety rules, practices practices them. So this is that next step. So first we receive, that's the, the, the simplest the responding is that next step of really engagement, uh, really getting them to, to, to actively engage, uh, to understand um, the things that we're trying to share with them. The next one is valuing. So valuing is demonstrate, demonstrating the belief in the democratic process, sen sensitive towards individual cultural differences. Values diversity. Diversity is, uh, couldn't be any more uh, important. And, uh, you know, I spend some time in our paramedic and EMT and first responder courses, uh, especially in areas that, um, you know, has some cultural diversity where you may uh, be, maybe going into different co communities or groups of people that have different values and cultural differences than we have. And sometimes it just is mere driving across a street to a different, um, you know, to a different uh, home that may have some of the different cultural values. So we, um, we want to really take some time and talk about that and think about how, how that, um, can impact that being human um, because what may not be our cultural beliefs, but that's their cultural beliefs. And we have to respect that and uh, value that, 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 that is different. And so, you know, I take some time. Um, I even have had partners where I've worked with that, you know, uh, may make an offhand comment or not, not understand something. So taking time to really um, share with them um, that, you know, we're, again, back in that fishbowl and, and what we feel is, you know, is our way of life isn't necessarily somebody else's way of life. And we just have to be able to, to respect that. Um, proposing a plan uh, under valuing is proposed as a plan to social improvement, follows through with commitments, uh, informs management on matters that one feels strongly about. So this is, this is, um, you know, not everybody fits that bill in valuing. Uh, it's kind of a, the mid-level are headed towards really tackling this domain. And there's been some people that um, may not, frankly, get to valuing, um, may not, you know, ever really get higher than the responding. So the next is, <coughs> excuse me, the next is uh, organization. So an organization uh, recognizing the need for balance between freedom uh, and responsible behavior, uh, explaining the roles of systematic planning and solving problems, accepts professional ethical standards, creates a life plan in harmony with uh, abilities, interests, and beliefs, prioritizes time effectively. Uh, I'm not quite there yet. I'm still working at it. I know many of you are probably chuckling because we all seem in EMS to have the same time priority prioritization problems. Um, meeting the needs of the organization, family, and self. So taking time out. Um, and we spend a lot of time talking about taking time out for yourself. Um, and I know it's, it's really tough when we're balancing maybe – um, you know, a full-time job and trying to take a first responder program because uh, your local rescue squad needs you and, and you really want to put that commitment in. You really want to help out. Uh, so it's that balance of trying to meet, meet those needs. And um, so 
the, the last but not least, the characterization. This is um, the, the highest level in the Bloom's taxonomy, taxonomy in the affective domain. Showing self-reliance when working independently, uh, cooperates in group activities, displays teamwork, displays a professional commitment to ethical practice on a daily basis, values people for what they are, not how they look. And when I read that, I thought, man, that, this is it right here. You know, valuing people for what they are, not how they look. And, uh, you know, I, I value all humans and we really um, should, and as EMS providers, that is something that when you show up, you should be valuing, valuing the people that were there to care for. There, there are constituents. There, there, there's somebody, somebody. There's somebody's um, family member, and that's just really, um, it, you know, it says it all. And when somebody's really hit that um, domain of learning, they've 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 got to the point where they've internalized these values um, in, through characterization. It's just really. Uh, it's really a dramatic thing to to witness. So here again is the slide. I um, kind of read them for you, but this is the next slide and, and just kind of breaks those out for you in the, um, in the Bloom's taxonomy here. So effective communication. Um, I, I take lots of leadership classes and it seems to always come up is one of the challenges that we have um, in, in EMS, in, in life, is that effective, effective communication. Communication broke down, and I have a little picture here with a couple little guys with the, the soup cans on a string um, trying, to, trying to make communication happen. And this is a really um, good topic, you know, whether it be communicating to your patients, communicating to your um, your family, your partners, your your supervisors, administrators, maybe it's even your community, somebody that you know you're at a town meeting or something. Uh, effective communication, and again, it's about the body language. Um, you're having a conversation with somebody, and you know they have their arms crossed, and they're standing there, and they have a frown on their face, and they're looking at the ceiling, and they're looking at the floor, but they're not looking at you, and you're and you're having a conversation at them, but they're not listening. Um, they've said that through their body language, and how many times when um, you know we have maybe new students or new people working with us, or even ourselves, when we've walked into somebody's house at two o'clock in the morning. Um, as, as they maybe, maybe they thought, boy, um, I don't, I don't know what Joe's problem was, but he come in and he didn't seem like he wanted to be here. And, and that's the last thing I'd ever want my patients to feel is that, that I didn't, I, I didn't want them to call me for help again, because that time that they, the fifth time that they called maybe it's that sixth time that's really going to make a big difference, but I was there on the fifth time and maybe they got from me that I really wasn't engaged. I really didn't care about their problem. I really didn't want to hear from them. Um, so I, I tell the students and I tell my partners, you know, monitor, you know, monitor your body language. Um, it, it, it really can send some, some unspoken messages about, um, about your, your, how you're feeling and, and how they may perceive that is negative. And uh, that's the last thing you want is that they may not call that sixth time and it may just be too late for somebody. And then <clears throat> their family, you know, it sends a huge, um, sends a huge message out to um, your community when that, when that gets out that, you know, those guys showed up and they just didn't listen. They didn't care. They didn't want to be there. They seemed like we were inconveniencing them. So really take a, take a second to think about your body language. And, and um, often when I'm having a conversation with somebody, I, I, I listen to understand really. And I, some, a lot of times I'll repeat things back and, you know, they, I get looks like, did you not hear me? No, I heard you. I just, I'm trying to frame this in my own thought process because I want to understand what you're telling me, not necessarily just to reply or just to shrug like, yeah, I heard you, but you didn't really process it. So really take time 
when you talk about active listening is to listen to understand, not to reply. Uh, I pay attention to little things. Tone, uh, your, your tone and your inflection when you're having a conversation with somebody, it really speaks, no pun intended, it speaks volume. Uh, and, uh, but tone is everything. When, when you're talking to somebody and it's not necessarily what you say, it's the tone of voice that you use to say it. And that really can leave, um, you know, it, it can turn somebody's listening, their, their active listening. They may have been active listening to you initially, but now because your tone was maybe sarcastic or snippy that they stopped listening and they're not, they don't want to hear what you have to say. And they've are instantaneously made up their mind that they're maybe not going to go to the hospital with you when they really maybe do need to go. Uh, so <clears throat> tone really uh, work I, and I've had you know this is these this is one of those elements of communication that's it's really again it's hard to it's hard to put it put it to paper but when you hear it you're like oh yeah yeah that's that's bad CPR that's bad CPR and I'm seeing it right now so or I'm hearing it so the right people getting the right information at the right time really key you got to get the right information to the right people uh, at the right time to, to have good, effective communication. You know, it might not be the time at two o'clock in the morning. And that's one of the things I, I talk to my patients. I say, you know, um, you know, I, I'd really like to have this conversation with you um, and, and use maybe a teachable moment, but it might not have been the right time at two o'clock in the morning because they frankly were sick and, and didn't want to hear, hear from me. So, um, so the, the human factor, really simply, it's about being human. And uh, you frame that how, how you want. Um, here's our, here's our fishbowl here that we're all um, always in a fishbowl. We're leading by example. Um, so everybody's always watching us. Uh, I tell, I tell our new EMTs, we're, we're on a, you're driving a billboard. <laughs> no matter what, what EMS agency or fire department, um, if you're, wear, you know, you're wearing a, 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 your uniform on the way to work and you're not necessarily even at work, but you're on your way to work, you're, you're in a fishbowl. And, and people, even in my community, I live here in a small town of Coleman and everybody knows me. I know there's people that know me, uh, know about me and I've never met. And they first time I walk up, is like, yeah, hey, I, how are you? I'm like, good, yeah. They're like, you know, I don't think we've ever met, but you know, I've seen you at the football games and you've been down there taking care of those players and you're just always in a fishbowl. You never know who's watching you, where they're watching you from. Uh, and, and just, you know, I, this is a message I share with, with, uh, with all my staff, my students, and uh, even my family is just, we're all in a fishbowl. We got to constantly, um, you know, just be mindful of that. So again, doing the right thing. Uh, I put a little, little my little addition even when it's not popular because sometimes the right thing if it's truly the right thing it may not be the most popular right thing to do i may be uncomfortable but deep down inside maybe it's it's um maybe you know it's clinically the right thing to do uh, or you know it's the right thing to do for the patient um and communicating with them uh, that you know maybe you, you need really do need to go to the hospital and, and their family Maybe he doesn't want them to go and they don't want to go, but, um, but clinically it's the right thing. And even when it's not popular, it's, it's a tough thing to do. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm at the end here. If I leave some, give us some, a few minutes here for some questions and answers uh, or just simply a, a statement. If anybody's got th something to share, I, I would be, uh, I'd be moved to hear from you. Thank you, Matt. I just wanted to say thank you for taking your time out of your busy schedule because I know you're a busy man to present the information to us tonight. Um, you do have one comment. Um, a gentleman said, doing the right thing is easy when everyone is watching. The kind of person you are is doing the right thing when nobody is watching. So I thought that was really um, a good thought to put out there to everybody. Um, 
At this time, um, I do um, have everybody muted, but I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. So if you have any questions for Matt at this time or for me, um, the time is now to ask. Um, so unless I, I'm just looking at the chat box here, I don't see any other comments or questions. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute everybody um, again. Um, if you don't have any questions, I just want to remind everybody, you do have two weeks or until February 13th to complete the attendance form, evaluation, and quiz. Um, and we also are lucky because Matt will be coming back next month to be presenting on another EMS webinar topic, and it will be called Everyone's a Leader in EMS. So that link to register will also be in the email that I send out concluding this webinar. Um, Oh, it looks like it looks like you have another comment, Matt. It says, thank you, Matt. I've been driving this home to the EMS class. Thanks for the material. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's great feedback. Thanks, Heather. So again, and I'm going to go. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. And if anybody would like this, I'd be happy to share this PowerPoint presentation with you. Um, my email is mdrake at mobilemedical.org. Uh, and um, if anybody would like, I'd be, I'd be happy to shoot me a quick email and I'll, I'll send it right off to you. Thanks. That'd be great, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> Emma already sent it to Okay, perfect. Yeah, so I, yep, and Matt, I, again, everyone, I will, this webinar is recorded, so I will put it up on the web, on the MCRH website, but if you do want a hard copy of the PowerPoint, and for some reason you didn't get it from me, um, you can please, please reach out to me, everybody knows my email, so, um, yeah, we'll make sure you have the information that you need. Is there anybody else on the line um, that has any questions or comments for Matt? Or is there anybody on the line that maybe joined in late and I didn't get you down as far as being in attendance? Matt, do you have any questions for anybody on the line? No, nope, nope, I sure don't. I just uh, really appreciate everybody uh, tuning in tonight and uh, look forward to seeing you all on the streets. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Thank you so much for taking the time. It was a great webinar. Um, and again, everyone, I will follow up after this. Oh, and also, I just wanted to let everybody know that I will be at the EMS Summit next month. Um, February 15th and 16th. I'm also going to be exhibiting there on behalf of Michigan Center for Rural Health. So if you want to meet me in person, I will be there. And I'm also presenting at the EMS Summit. Um, so um, look for me if you're there. It's um, in East Lansing this year. The venue has, um, or the destination has moved. I, I wasn't able to attend last year. So um, I'm really excited to be able to join everybody this year. All right, so any last minute questions or comments? Thank you, Emma. Thank you for joining us, everybody. And again, um, if for some reason you don't get my email. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> if for some reason you don't get an email from me tonight, anyone, um, please make sure you reach out to me and I'll get you all the information you need. So, um, Matt, thank you again. And Thank you, everybody, for joining in tonight. Thanks, Emma. Thanks, Matt.